Ladies and gents, today marks the day of something new. I just recently posted a poll on my YouTube channel and today is Wednesday, February 2nd, around 10 a.m. And I'm still waiting for the results. It's only been posted for about five minutes or there's only about five votes. So yeah, there's not a wide variety of people getting a vote, but when they do get in here, I will come and tell you guys the title, but you guys will already know the title and the objective of this new series. Anyways, I'll see you in a bit. Before we get into the video, I'd appreciate it if you guys went down below and smash like button. Let's hit 69 likes for this video. Before we get into building new PCs, let's talk about what I'm starting this series off with. I'm starting in the month of February, obviously. I'm starting this month off with two PCs listed. The first PC is a Ryzen 5 2600 and GTX 1070 PC. The total cost was around $432. And that estimated profit is around 400 if it sells for asking price. Now the second PC is a different story. It's an i7-4790 and a GTX 970, which is more on the budget end compared to the 1070 PC. But sadly, the build cost was about the same. Actually, it was more expensive at $493, and the estimated profit on this one is 150 But as I always tell myself, profit is profit no matter how small. Anyways, let's build another PC. And this PC is estimated to make me around $200. So let's go. Starting off this PC build, we got an i3-10100, which is an awesome four core processor. And I've never used one of these in a PC flip before, so I'm pretty excited. I did sort of overpay for it, but I made up for it by getting a really good deal on the GPU. Next part up is the RAM. It's just a Micron kit here. It's a 16 gigabyte kit clocked at 2133 megahertz. It's kind of slow, but it is a 10th gen Intel, so it can't even really reach the high speeds, especially on the motherboard we're gonna be using. And for storage, we're going NVMe. I've honestly only used a few NVMe drives and flips, and I'm super excited to use this one as well, because it's gonna reduce the cable clutter and make the build just look super clean. But yeah, it's a Team Group MP33 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and these were on sale on Amazon, and this is one of the two I bought. I'm gonna be using another one and another up and coming flip. And from the motherboard here, it was a refurbished deal, which was selling through Newegg, but they sold it on eBay. And it's a Gigabyte B450M DS3H. It's a micro ATX motherboard. It has four RAM slots and an M.2 slot, and it's the micro ATX form factor. And it should do well for our little budget build. For the CPU cooler, I'm just gonna be using an Intel stock cooler. I'm gonna be sharpening the top part black just so it matches the build aesthetic a little bit better. And it also is one of the Intel coolers with the copper core, so it is a little bit better. And the i3-10100 shouldn't run hot at all. Yeah, I realize just taking off the sticker looks a bit better. The Sharpie kinda just made it look purple. If you can guys see like right there, kinda just looked purple. So that looks a bit better, but eh, it's still kind of an ugly cooler. Now that the base of the PC build is fully put together, we can talk about all the other parts. But before that, let's talk about this motherboard here. Honestly, this provides some pretty great value. I didn't even notice, but it has included Wi-Fi and it still came with the antenna, so that's always a plus. Also, I'm pretty sure it's a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. So when selling a PC and you're including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities, that's a pretty big plus against your other competitors. Anyways, powering up our build is an EVGA 460 watt BT. It's an 80 plus bronze unit and I got that on EVGA B stock. And then casing all of our components is a Montac Air 100 Lite. I kind of hate saying case names. It sounds weird to me, but that's the case we're going to be using. So I'm sure you guys can agree, but this case is pretty sleek. It has a really nice black clean design to it. It's really minimal in my opinion, and it's pretty clean. Has a really nice mesh front panel to get extreme airflow for your build here. Also comes pre-installed with two black 120 millimeter fans and has a hinged glass door, which is a pretty awesome feature. As you PC flippers know, RGB helps a build sell. So yeah, we're gonna be adding some up here RGB fans. It's a five pack here. And to stick with the clean black minimal design we're going with, we're gonna be using some black cable extensions. The 
build is coming together, the last and final step is the GPU here. It's an EVGA GTX 980 Super Clocked Edition, and I picked this up for a killer steal for around $80. By far my least favorite part of this build is the cable extensions. I hate putting on cable combs. Let me know down below your guys' thoughts on cable extensions. Do you guys like using them in your flips? Have you ever used them in your flips? And do you just like them in general? I like them because they do add a ton of points in the aesthetics department, but I hate adding on the cable comb. Anyways, let's finish this build. All right, ladies and gents, it is time. Let's go and insert this bad baby right now. Oh, that was not satisfying at all. Got no click whatsoever. All righty, let's go and plug in these cable extensions here. I feel like these added so much to the build. The build looks so clean. Has a nice clean black aesthetic. Almost all the parts are basically black other than the ugly green PCB on the RAM sticks here. And then we've got RGB. So basically you can have any color mode you want. Alrighty, let's put this front panel back on. It shouldn't matter which way. Yeah, this goes right back on. Whew. Now let's flip the power switch. One, two, three. Oh my God. This thing is so clean. Ooh, drop a fat W down below guys and let me know what you think of this build. So bad news, the PC, it's not booting. Yeah, it looks great and all with all the RGB and the cable extensions, yeah, it looks clean. But there's no good if the PC doesn't even work. I swapped out the GPU with the 1050 Ti, still didn't work. I swapped no GPU, well, so I tried no GPU and I tried just plugging it into the i3 because it's not an F variant, so it has integrated graphics and still nothing. And when I noticed the PC kept turning on and off and the power supply, it's not that, it's brand new. But these cable extensions, they were only $16 on Amazon, so maybe it's those. So I'm gonna swap these out and just go with the normal power supply cables and see if that works. And if it does, then I'm gonna have to find some other cable extensions on Amazon that are from a better brand, I guess. Alrighty, I got it all hooked up on my girlfriend's setup. I'm just using her monitor. Set the power button. I hope it works, and if it doesn't, then, oh well. <laughs> then I don't know what the hell. I think I'll just take a break and sleep on it because I don't want to get irritated, you know? So far, we are getting no signal. Oh, I don't think. Ugh. I mean, okay. I'm gonna try the simple things. Like I'm gonna try one RAM stick. But then I'm gonna move towards the CPU. I really hope it's not the processor. <sighs> Ladies and gents, we kind of took an L, sort of. Let me hit the power button and explain. Just give it a minute and pay attention to the monitor here. Maybe. There we go. So as you can see, the PC worked. So you're probably asking yourself, why did you take an L? <sighs> The i3 here doesn't work, so I had to swap it to an i5-10400. I picked that up a while ago on my local market for $80. But it sucks because all that does is raise the price of our bill. So yeah, that's why we took an L. The PC works in the end, and I'm going to have to add the cable extensions back in, and hopefully it still works. But uh, sadly, the i3 doesn't work. And the seller I bought it from, he's kind of a flake. He was a really cool guy, but I messaged him a while back ago saying one of the parts I bought from him broke. And he kind of just like blew me off. So I'm just saying, uh, F you, and uh, I'll just take the loss on this one. But anyways, let's install Windows, benchmark this thing, and then get it listed. The PC is done. And even with that setback with the broken CPU, we came out on top. The total cost of the new build is now $558. It's definitely way more than I wanted to spend, but oh well, what can you do? I'm listing it at $775, and if it sells, that is around a $200 profit. So now, instead of two PCs listed, we're starting this month off with three PCs listed, and the estimated profit from all three together is around $750. I'm still kind of upset about the broken i3, but you know, <laughs> you can't really do much. I'm not, I'm not a damn surgeon. I can't bring the damn thing back to life, so... Sometimes you just gotta take an L, but I'm happy we kind of turned it into a W. Anyways, if you would like to see more in-depth behind the scenes content of this series, then join the channel as a member. It also supports me and you get to gain access to behind the scene content. Stay tuned for episode two in this series. We're gonna be building up some budget PCs. Smash the like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you loved it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.